Hello, buddy, Sanyer, engineer, MBA, and investor. And in today's video, I want to talk about Sparing Vision, latest news, a latest report on their program, which leads us to make the following statement. Antilia keeps winning. And of course, I made a video about this a couple of months ago with that title that Antilia keeps winning. And it was actually about Sparing Vision as well in that video. But today's video is specifically about this press release that was released by Sparing Vision. Of course, Sparing Vision is a separate company that's not NTLA. It's not owned by NTLA, although NTLA owns 10% of the company. We'll take a look in that shortly. But of course, this comes from year. Uh, that's two straight videos from Yer's uh, post on x.com. So thank you so much, Yer, for these uh, posts. Of course, you get lots of visibility on x.com, but also in our channel. So keep doing the great work. Okay, so Sparing Vision has announced positive initial safety data from its phase one Prodigy clinical trial, SPVN06. And of course, this is a statement by Sparing Vision saying lean gene therapy asset reported to be well tolerated in their first dose of cohort low dose at favorably safety profile. So just as a reminder, whatever they're track tackling is about 1.5 million people has that uh, inherited blindness disease. Uh, and their cohort is about, I believe, 33 patients. That's the total number of patients that this program aims to dose. Uh, and they've already got data from three people, right? So you take a look at here, low dose, that's N equals three. They're gonna escalate to another cohort with N3. N3 is a total of six sample size in the first step. After the second step, they're gonna sort of, you know, solidify their uh, dosage level depending on the first three patients in the first step, in the first three cohorts. And of course, move on to larger data and of course, then have follow up. And of course, it, you take a look at this long term follow up, a light five years. I mean, this is a long term thing, right? I mean, everybody in this channel knows that clinical trials are won't take two or three years, minimum seven to nine years before getting anywhere near the FDA side of things. And of course, this started well before step one. I mean, you had IND enabling, IND submissions. Uh, so give or take, it's been what, two years now. So you take a look at that another four or five years to go through this study. So, uh, so that's going to be an interesting, but more specifically, you take a look at here, safe D data collected on first three patients. Uh, okay. The patients were each injected at the 1520 national hospital in Paris. So this is in Paris, not in the U S uh, I concluded that it is safe to initiate the second cohort which is at medium dose. So they're going forward with three more patients uh, with this program. And you're looking at what is this? The primary endpoint is to expect it to reach 2025. So that's about in two years. Okay. Um, and that's good. So why does this matter? Right? Why did this news matter to us in the CRISPR landscape? Well, it's because NTLA owns 10% of this company, right? And there was actually a deal that went on between NTLA and Sparing Vision back two years ago, back in 2021, I believe. And really the big, big part of that, that a lot of people loved was that the, um, that NTLA was to receive 10% of equity stake in Sparing Vision. So basically what we're getting at is NTLA, the company that we all know in the CRISPR landscape owns 10% of this private company. So that means that this, if this company goes public, let's say in two, three, four, five years. And let's assume this program that they have going goes really well and they can actually have another set of program doing really well. Well, now let's say they go public, let's say they're valued. And don't forget, this is in three, four years. So you gotta remember, you know, valuations are getting changed by them and it won't sound as crazy as it might to make it sound. But let's say this company goes out for $2 billion. Well. NTLA owns $200 million worth of that company, right? And they can basically sell that, cash in 200 million, that's gonna last them, what, two or three quarters. That's some good money, guys, it's no joke. And you gotta remember that not only that they're getting, uh, they're getting um, 10%, um, but they're also getting, also getting the following. 
and TLA will own rights of two out of the three programs. So the three drugs that Sparing Vision will elect to, uh, to opt in for this program uh, with that they have going with, of course, leveraging uh, CRISPR-Cas9 from NTLA's technology side. NTLA can own two of the three programs when it comes to commercializations, the rights. So that's 50-50. Right, uh, would on, will NTLA will own all of commercial rights in the U.S. and fifty percent outside of the U.S. That's pretty big, guys. That is no joke. That's pretty big. These are big, big numbers. And of course, this is uh, this is not ex this is excluding the fact that Sparing Vision paid two hundred million dollars in milestones and products and royalties. So this is some good money. Like if you were to make like a, you can't even estimate the amount of money that they could NTLA could make from this deal that they made two years ago and again in hindsight it, it seemed like a not a big deal it was like well what's going it's in 2021 this is back in october it didn't seem like a big deal but it is a big deal because sparing with now ntla has sort of tentacles in another side of the business that beam therapeutics have been doing for a couple of years now of course with verbs you know partnerships matters right and more specifically these types of deals matter because this is what I expect CRISPR to become in the next two, three, four, five years. A tool that other companies are willing to pay upfront and sell some equity slash shares of their own private company or public company or big pharma company, for example, to the companies that own those technologies like CRISPR Therapeutics and TLA, Beam Therapeutics, Prime, and so on. Now, I'm not gonna go into the whole patent stuff between NTLA, the West and East, you know, MIT, Broad Institute versus, uh, the West there, I'm not gonna get into that because that's not the point here in this video. The point here is that this deal is working for NTLA, it's working for Sparing Vision clearly, and I think this is good. I think the data, data, latest data released from uh, Sparing Vision is quite promising, and I love it. I love it because now we have a program that is doing really well, that is not from the CRISPR company called NTLA, but NTLA has equity in this program. They have equity in the company. So I think it's good. I think everybody has reasons to follow Sparing Vision and these news. So hopefully you guys appreciate this video. As always guys, subscribe if you're not, like this video if you found value, and let me know in the comments below guys, what do you guys think about this news? What do you guys are looking for? Do you think it's a win for NTLA? Do you think I'm exaggerating? Let me know in the comments guys. I'll see you guys in the next video.